All right, guys, I got another box in today. And uh, I get to put the finishing touches on the enclosure. But before I do, uh, this is not what is sold as the laser safe acrylic or laser safe plexiglass. So I want to do a little testing before I put this in place to see how much protection it's going to offer. So that's what I'm going to be doing uh, before we put this stuff into play. Uh, I'm going to go ahead just for the, the purpose of not letting it interfere with the test I'm going to do. I'm going to try to get this uh, little layer of protective film here off of it. At, at, at least for the moment. So stick around and I'm gonna set up this test and we're gonna see about getting this uh, enclosure completed. All right guys, tonight uh, I wanna start off with a waiver, all right? I'm not a scientist. This is not exactly a scientific experiment. Uh, I've done some research, I've done some reading, and a lot of what I've read says that your standard orange uh, acrylic will actually serve pretty well as a protective barrier for enclosures. Now. I was just gonna buy the laser uh, safe plexiglass and you know, just do it that way. But then I priced the laser safe plexiglass and I have determined that I don't wanna buy that if I don't have to. So what I've done is I went on Amazon, I found some orange transparent or semi-transparent <clears throat> uh, acrylic plexiglass. <clears throat> and I found a roll of this, which is an orange tint that is made to go on acrylic or glass or whatever to, to like it's basically the same as window tint in your cars the only difference is it is orange and the only purpose for this is i'm going to try to use this plexiglass and i'm hoping that it will dissipate block reflect or whatever any stray uh light from the laser now the purpose of this window is not to protect you from a direct beam of the laser. The way this is designed, unless there is something really catastrophic that takes place inside here, the laser should always be going down and any light coming out the window should always be reflected light rather than a direct light. So this test is actually a little extreme because what I'm actually doing is I am attempting to see if I can make the light come through this glass at all, if, if I can get it to show. Uh, what I've done is I've got this set up and I've got the plexiglass, I've got it lifted up to where I can see underneath it. I've got it right in the edge and I'm gonna try using the, the fire laser uh, button. I'm gonna see how much of the light actually goes through this plexiglass into, uh, I've got a white piece of cardboard underneath it so that you can see the, the reflection of the light if, if it does hit it. So I'm gonna move the camera over here. You're not gonna be able to see me, but hopefully you'll be able to hear me. Uh, I haven't checked the audio tonight, but I did after, after everybody's feedback last night, I went in and played with the camera and the mic settings a little bit, and I got it to where I think it needs to be. So you can give me some feedback on that. If the mic sounds worse than it did last night, let me know. I've got all my fans running. It feels much better out here, guys. Uh, not sweating as bad. But I'm going to move the camera over and I'm going to give you a good view of this. Hopefully, since you don't have to wear glasses because you're watching on a TV, hopefully you'll be able to see whether or not the light goes through. I'm going to leave my glasses on uh, and then I'll just look for myself in the video in the edit process. Uh, the one thing that I will be watching for is to see if, if this stuff stops the, uh, the blue light from, from going through. It's been a minute since uh, since I studied, you know, photons and how they move and how they maneuver and that kind of thing. But two things should happen. 
if this plexiglass blocks them and stops them from going through the material, then technically I should be able to, to cut it or to, to drill through it. And from what I've been told, you can't other than black, and I do know you can't do clear, but I've never tried orange. So if, if you can't cut it, but it, it doesn't let the light pass through it, the only thing that could be happening is that it reflects it or dissipates it inside the material. So either it's gonna burn a hole in the edge of my, my material or it's just gonna reflect it and nothing's gonna happen. That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping it doesn't just burn a hole into my cardboard and, and, and I've wasted my money on this material, but we're gonna see. So I'm gonna move the camera over and get everything set up. And uh, like I said, don't try this at home. I'm not a professional, I'm not an expert. Use your own judgment. If you do choose to use this type of material after this test, that is your decision, okay? I'm, I'm simply showing you what happens here because I know a lot of folks are like me. I'd really like to have the plastic, you know, the, the orange plastic, but it's awfully expensive. And so I'm just trying to make, I'm gonna make a decision for myself and I'm bringing you along and you can watch the video and make your own decision. So here we go. I'm gonna move you over into the, uh, where you can see in the enclosure. I'm leaving the light off so that hopefully we'll be able to see the blue light. All right, guys, I have the uh, camera set up. I had to go to manual focus. Uh, you should be able to see the uh, pointer light below my piece of material there. And the, the plexiglass is here. Uh, the purpose of this white piece of cardboard is basically just to be able to see, because if, if that light makes it through this plexiglass, you should be able to see it on the uh, white piece of paper, just like you can the red, the, the red pointer. Because the, the red pointer is passing through the plexiglass and contacting the, uh, the white piece of paper. So my theory is that in the event that the blue light makes it through this it should also be visible over here all right so i'm going to start off all i'm doing is i'm using the fire button here for the uh for framing i'm just i'm just going to use that fire button and i'm going to slowly crank the power up until either either we see some damage happening or we see some light coming through so there's five percent uh that's five percent power standard uh standard little framing burn, and you can see that it appears that the light is traveling inside the material because I can see it through the end, but I don't see anything on the, on the paper. So I'm gonna cut that off, and I'm gonna go on up to 10% power and fire that again. All right, uh, doesn't appear to be anything happening. The light is not making it to the white sheet. Uh, I'm not going to leave this thing running too long because if in the event that it does actually start, it does start penetrating or start cutting the material, I don't want to, I don't want to ruin my material. That's kind of why I'm in the edge here. So that's 10% and 10%, you can see the light is refracting back through the plexiglass, but there's none hitting the, hitting the sheet that doesn't appear. Uh, like I said, I'm going to have to go back and watch this in the, in the, uh, in the editing phase because I got to wear my glasses but all right so I'm gonna go up to 20 and I'm gonna hit it on 20 percent all right there's 20 percent uh that appears to be having some effect on the material so okay okay so there we do there we go we can uh penetrate it at 20 percent it penetrated well, that brings me to ask the question, can you cut orange acrylic now? Oh yeah, will not let me go to 30% on the test fire, apparently. Yeah, 20, 20 is it gonna be as high as it's gonna let me go on the test fire. So any higher than that, we'll have to, we'll have to, it's not burning the material below, but now what that does tell me though, is that it was stopping it up until 20% power so let me move the uh, let me move the gantry out of the way. Let's see if we punched a tiny little hole through that. Yes, it did, guys. It you can see it in the cross section of the material. So, huh? Now I want to know because if if that is true, 
That means I don't have to drill this stuff to, to use it for my enclosure. So I'm gonna go back and watch the video and see how it was doing until I hit it with 20% power, see if it was blocking out the uh, refractive light. But the fact that it cut through it, that tells me that it is stopping the, the light because if it weren't stopping the light from passing through it, it would be just like clear acrylic and it would have just passed straight through there. Uh, let me get a piece of clear acrylic and show you right quick. So this is a clear acrylic and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn the beam on and I'm gonna turn it up to 20% and we'll see, or I'm gonna turn it up to 10% first, five, 10 and then to 20 and we'll see if the light passes through this or not. So I'm starting out, this is 5% and I'm firing the laser and as you can see, the 5% five, 5 it is passing through and there's the dot. Ten percent, and yes, it is. It is the light is passing through at ten still. And twenty percent. So yeah, it definitely will pass through clear acrylic, and and there's no there's no tiny hole with the clear. So guys, I, I mean. The only way that that's, that's working, and the only way that uh, it punched a hole through that stuff means that we should be able to cut it. Okay guys, now we're fixing to, uh, fixing to find out. Uh, secondly, if this stuff does stop, if it blocks UV light, or not necessarily UV, but if it blocks a diode laser, then by blocking the laser, it should also make itself susceptible to be cut with said laser. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try to get away from the center of my material because I don't wanna, I don't want my material that I'm fixing to use on my enclosure to have holes all in it. But I am, however, gonna try to put one right in the corner of this sheet just to test and see if the thing will, will, will cut it. So I'm gonna make me a, we'll say three millimeter by three millimeter hole. I'm gonna set this up for a cut. And I'm gonna line up my laser Try to get it right in the corner there. So let me frame this out and see what happens here. Uh, I can't see. Okay, that should be in the material. So I'm gonna run this burn and see what happens. If it cuts, that means it is blocking the light, right guys? I mean, as, am, am I wrong? If it wasn't blocking the light, it wouldn't cut it, right? So, a little air assist there, and let's go. I don't know how many passes that was. That was only three passes, so I'm gonna run that one more time, because I don't know how many passes it would take, but I wanna make sure I'm through it. Let's see if it cut through it or what it did. Hmm. All right, guys. Uh, I think I've solved the mystery. So apparently, if everything that everyone's ever told you about cutting clear acrylic is correct, then apparently my $11 sheet of uh, orange plexiglass is just as effective as any other plexiglass. And the reason I say that is the way a laser works is it fires that directed beam of light into a specific spot. And if the material offers enough resistance to that beam, 
it results in chipping away material and generation of heat and it's able to bore through that material. So I'm a little rusty on my sights. So in the example of regular plexiglass, that's why you can't cut regular plexiglass. Is regular plexiglass allows that light to pass through it without generating any kind of damage to the material or generating any heat. So by the fact that I just cut a hole through transparent acrylic, uh, that tells me that it's stopping the blue light. Because if it wasn't stopping the blue light, there, the, the forces of the light would not be able to remove the material and, and cause it to cut. So, unless you focus your laser on this material and run it at a significant power, the light's not getting out of here. The only way the light is getting through here is if it punches a hole. Because, I mean, everybody knows you can't cut clear acrylic, but you can cut black. And the reason you can cut black is because black stops the light. So obviously this is gonna suffice for my window. I think it'll work because I know now that even if my laser is reflected off of the base, off of the honeycomb, off of a piece of metal, that if it hits this, this is gonna stop it to the point that, you know, it cuts through it, of course. But the fact that it's going to be so out of focus when the light hits this, it, it shouldn't do any damage because I had to focus on this and I had to turn it up the power to get it to come through it. So, so yeah, I think this stuff is good. I do know also that you can technically cut the lens on your, uh, on your D1. You can cut it with the laser as well if you're not careful. Uh, I've heard people say they, they, they did it cutting stainless or trying to cut the shiny side of a mirror and stuff like that. So... So yes, this passes my safety test, so I won't be using my, uh, my film today. I'll save that for another project and, uh, you know, or whatever. But today I will not be using the film. I could, however, put the film on here as kind of a protective layer. A layer. That way if it gets dirty, I can just peel the film off and put more. But we'll, we'll cross that bridge if we come, when we come to it. But for 11 bucks, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm just gonna make me a window and we're gonna move on. So. Let me get to making a window and I'll show you what this thing's gonna look like with the window in place. All right guys, after a little bit of uh, engineering and a little woodworking, I've got it together. Got the window in. Uh, it is secure, it won't fall out. I think it looks pretty decent. Uh, I went ahead and uh, trimmed the front of it out with a little bit of cypress to, to add a little bit more uh, depth to it, a little more design. But the uh, the build is complete, guys. That is, uh, that's what I was wanting. It seems to work, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the way it turned out. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna kinda show you what it looks like when the machine is running with it open, and what it looks like when it's closed as far as the, the light coming back. I'm gonna use the camera to kinda show you that. Uh, so let me, get, let me get set up over here, and I will be using my handy little piece of white uh, cardboard that I had. Let me go ahead and set my focus on it and all that good stuff. And I'm gonna move the camera over here so you can look straight in on the machine and, and see how much light splash there is inside. And then I'm gonna close the door and uh, show you how that light just goes away. All right guys, for this demonstration, I'm gonna be lowering the light level inside the shack here. That way, hopefully the camera will pick up what's going on and you can see what's happening here. So I'm gonna go ahead and rehome the machine. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna run this little burn here so that you can see the, the, the splash of the light and how much of the light is actually coming out of the machine. And then we're gonna close the door and have a look at it there. Uh, this is gonna be 100% power burn on this piece of cardboard and it should get pretty bright. So I'm gonna get behind the camera where I can see what's going on. Okay, as you can see, lots of blue light being expelled in there. So I'm gonna shut the lid here. And there we go. 
no more blue. So it works pretty well. I mean, you can still see the. Uh, let me get. The, let me relocate the the camera one more time. Okay, there you go. Hey, you can see me. You can see my reflection too, guys. But there you go. That's uh, that's what it looks like looking in through the window. And that's what it looks like with the door open. So, so, so far, so good, guys. I'm going to call that a, uh, a success. So, guys, uh, I hope this was uh, informative. And, uh, you know, I've had a couple people ask me about the... Uh, blueprint that I used for my enclosure and I promise you there is no blueprint just like with the window uh, I, I didn't know how I was going to put the window in until I got the piece of glass measured everything and just kind of throw it together uh, it's a pretty basic design but like I said I like it it's pretty handy I did also because I sit over here a lot I put me a little board here at the bottom to kind of frame out my window and that way too, I can actually open it from over here and not have to use the handle if I don't want to. Uh, so I like it. Uh, everything everything seems to be working the way I wanted it to. Uh, like I said, I can't I can't guarantee that this stuff is stopping all of the light, but the fact that I can cut it leads me to believe this. It, it's it's doing a pretty good job, and uh, it's not going to be getting direct light. So so it's it's a lot better than what I had for sure. Uh, because before with the vacuum table, you know, I, I usually just left the, the top up and I had no, I had no top really. I mean, so anybody could come in or the cats even, I've even had situations where the cats would jump up there and try to investigate. So I think this is going to be a lot safer for everybody and every animal involved. So, uh, but anyway, guys, thanks for stopping by, and I hope you enjoy the videos and enjoy the content. And if you do, uh, show your appreciation, please, by hitting the subscribe button, giving me a thumbs up, whatever. I've also, I just want to drop this for uh, a little food for thought. I created a poll, and the reason I created the poll, I asked the question, you know, what is your primary use for your X-Tool D1? Is it a hobby? Is it a hobby that you try to make a little side money with or do you do it as a business? Now, I know that these machines aren't particularly for your, your, your laser engraving businesses. Uh, you know, I, I do know that it could be. That I would, you'd probably need multiple machines, but, but there are a lot faster machines out there. But the reason I asked that question is because I've had a lot of people asking me about how do you sell your stuff, how do you, you get started making a little side money, and, and and what things do you sell, and all that. And so I'm trying to decide. Uh, I want to sit down and, and maybe write out some bullet points and some things that I've learned. Not that I'm a professional, not that I'm, you know, a big time or anything like that. But I, I have been able to basically make enough money to pay for my toys off of my toys. So. If that's something you're interested in, just go down there to my uh, the community side of my YouTube channel, take that poll because that's what I'm going to be basing the, the 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 bullet points that I'm coming up with. I'm going to try to decide how to cater that to try to benefit as many people as I can. So if you if you got a minute, just flip over to the community page and take that poll for me, and and that'll help me in planning the video that I'm going to try to do. So thanks for stopping by and. Uh, as always, have a good day.